How you've clicked onto the tropical tidbit for Sunday, September 25th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Well, we've just seen Tropical Storm Carl come up just to the southeast of Bermuda here and uh, quickly recurve to the northeast after bringing tropical storm conditions to the island. It is now off your screen, uh, becoming a post-tropical cyclone and moving off into the open North Atlantic and will no longer be a threat to land. We also have the remnant low of Tropical Storm Lisa, which is no longer a tropical storm, moving off into the open eastern Atlantic and is expected to dissipate over the next couple of days, also no threat to land. So our attentions are quickly turning here down toward the deep tropics where we have this broad area of turning associated with this tropical wave uh, well to the south here. And this is dubbed Invest 97L and will be moving uh, toward the Windward Islands over the next three or four days. And this is the type of wave that bears watching as it nears the Caribbean because large waves like this with these deep envelopes of moisture and convection tend to be able to survive this relatively dry area of the central Atlantic that we've had most of the season so far. And we can see there is plenty of dry air to the north of it here in this lighter color indicating a dust cloud from Africa associated with dry air to the north and northwest of the system. But it is unlikely to infiltrate this broad area of protecting moisture around the wave, which we can see on the microwave uh, pass of total precipitable water from Sims showing this large area of orange here associated with the wave indicating deep moisture, the dry air to the north so far not getting entrained into the circulation at this time and it really isn't forecast to over the next few days and this this is a pretty southerly uh, track that the system is taking far enough south that it can really kind of just slip underneath this dry air and so this may remain pretty healthy as it tracks to the west. And what happens when uh, there's ample moisture available like this is you can see these bands of convection forming pretty nicely uh, to the west and north of the system. And what this convection does over time is it uh, can concentrate this very broad area of vorticity or spin into a tighter circulation. And this is a slow process, but eventually this can become a more compact uh, area of low pressure by the time it nears the islands. And when it becomes tight enough, it can actually become a tropical storm. And this is something that the models generally agree will happen over the next few days as these thunderstorms continue to fire. This is the uh, GFS model out at 850 millibars. If we start at the beginning here, you'll see this broad area of turning that we have now, very, very broad, not even really a closed low uh, technically. But as we go out over the next couple of days, by Tuesday, we start to see a more concentrated looking system as it nears the islands. And then by Wednesday, we have what looks like a closed low and perhaps a tropical storm on the model near Barbados. And this has been very consistent and has support from the European model as well, which shows something very similar, just a little bit farther south by Wednesday night here over the southern Windward Islands. And so these models together have had a pretty good consensus over the last few days. And uh, normally this means that uh, there are pretty high probability of tropical storm formation in the near term. And the NHC agrees with this, having 80% odds for 97L becoming a tropical storm over the next five days. And this could put the Windward Islands at risk for tropical storm conditions if this indeed forms near that region. And there's likely to be tropical storm force winds with this wave regardless of whether it develops technically before reaching the islands. You can see these very strong trade winds to the north of the system due to this pressure gradient. These waves often bring tropical storm conditions to the islands regardless of whether they are technically a storm. Uh, so uh, heavy weather is coming for at least the southern uh, Lesser Antilles uh, by th uh, Wednesday or Thursday. And so this is will have to be watched carefully. And then these models continue to show the potential for a very southerly track here. This is the European out to day five, showing something that could skirt the northern coast of South America and Venezuela. And this is a region that is not accustomed to tropical storm conditions. And so this should be something that uh, is watched by interests in that region very carefully as well, as this is a rare risk to that region of the Atlantic coastline. So we'll keep a, a close eye on the southerly track. Uh, in general, uh, this is expected to have a pretty favorable environment in this area of the world. And you might recall that we normally talk about this being an unfavorable zone for tropical waves. The Eastern Caribbean and near the Lesser Antilles, normally we speak of storms if they're not well developed by this point, they tend to struggle in this region. And that is true, but we normally talk about that earlier in the year. Uh, the trade winds are pretty strong in the Central Caribbean 
during July, August, and most of September. And the reason this area is usually unfavorable is because this accelerating flow south of Hispaniola and Jamaica tends to promote divergence in the low levels of the atmosphere, which induces sinking aloft, which suppresses thunderstorm activity and makes it difficult for circulations to close off and form tropical storms from waves in here. As we get toward the end of September and early October, as we are now, these trade winds come to a much slower pace over the Central Caribbean, and so it becomes less of a detriment to this area of the Atlantic and Eastern Caribbean here. And so a wave like this at this time of year getting into this zone will not have as difficult of a time as a wave a month or two months ago. And so if we look at the European model showing the 850 millibar wind by Wednesday night, you can see the low here and then this very strong trade wind to the north here due to the pressure gradient north of the low. But note how it's not that strong over the Central Caribbean. There's no longer this area of screaming 30 knot winds over the Central Caribbean. Uh, so now we have air that is slowing down as it comes from east to west, which indicates piling up of air or convergence over the Eastern Caribbean. This is a much more favorable situation for a system to develop than you would normally have earlier in the hurricane season. So this is not likely to struggle in the same way as it comes through this area. And models tend to agree right now that this system could strengthen once it forms if it's over water in the Caribbean. The only wild card right now is whether it's too far south and interacts with uh, South America and the coast of Venezuela, in which case uh, that could keep it weak. But if it has time over water here and it's actually far enough north, we could see a strengthening storm in the Caribbean, and this is a pretty strong signal on the models at the moment. This is the European Ensemble mean out to day nine showing the uh, pressure anomaly, indicating a broad area of low pressure here because a lot of members are spread out all over the place, but most of the ensemble members here show hurricanes developing in the Caribbean and moving toward the northwest, and we have this big ridge over New England. Uh, this is a classic pattern for Caribbean development. Very strong local Hadley cell in the Western Hemisphere. Strong high here promotes convergence to the south. And this is a, a strong looking signal for tropical activity on the European, supported by the GFS ensemble as well, which is even more aggressive looking because the uh, tracks are more clustered together, showing a very deep ensemble mean storm in the northern uh, Caribbean and near the Greater Antilles by day nine. Now the, the details of any kind of track in here just cannot be known at this time. There are way too many variables. We don't even have a developed system yet. Timing exactly where the system actually forms within this broad envelope of moisture. All details that the models just don't know and we don't know yet. And so it's very difficult to nail down what could happen after this point. All we really know right now is that this is likely to develop somewhere in this area as it moves into the Windward Islands and perhaps near the coast of uh, northern South America during the next five days. After that point, it's really, uh, really unsure what's going to happen in here, except that the environment would favor strengthening if this does not interact too much with land. And so it's very possible that we could have a hurricane somewhere in the Caribbean in the longer range later this week. And unfortunately, once a storm gets into the Caribbean, of course, it's very difficult to avoid hitting land somewhere. And so uh, this is likely to become a problem for somebody down the road. And so interests in the Caribbean should start keeping a close eye on this system as it approaches the Lesser Antilles. But uh, this area will get the impacts first. Windward Islands and Southern Lesser Antilles likely to see tropical storm-like conditions, if not a bona fide tropical named storm by the time we uh, approach Wednesday sometime around that uh, middle part of the week here. And in Northern South America, again, should keep an eye on this as well, because this could be a rare storm that has the potential to bring nasty conditions to Venezuela and associated Caribbean islands nearby as well uh, later in the week. And uh, we'll be tracking the system for quite a while, uh, for the entire week and perhaps into next week as well, uh, if it manages to survive through the Caribbean. So we'll keep a very close eye on 97L, and uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.